well. It's great to all be together. All right? Kids, I want to say how wonderful it is that you're in the whole meeting. Because we are a family. Right? We're a family. When you become a Christian, you have your normal family that you live with, but you get caught up in this big family of other Christians. And not just Christians here at Trinity Church meeting in this school, but with Christians all around the world. It's amazing. And you meet people when you're going around the world, and there's something about them. And you kind of think, they feel like they're part of my family. And then you talk to them, you find out they love Jesus too. And it's amazing. And so it's great that we can be family all together. So I'm hoping, as I talk for a little bit now, I'm hoping you'll be able to listen and hear what I'm saying. Um, and there's some things for us to look at and watch as well. But um, when I ask you questions, all right, you're all kids, all right, so you can answer. All right, so does anyone know what job I used to do? Anyone know what job? Amy, do you know what job I used to do? Removal. I did do removal, so right. As a student, I used to do removals. I'm very good at lifting tables and moving them. And, and I know how to repair scratches without anyone noticing. I've got all those skills. No, I don't. But I know they used to do that a lot. <laughs> what did I used to do? Anyone know? I mean, we're all kids, so you can all answer. Oh, thank you, thank you, mate. Uh, I used to be a head teacher of a school. All right? so I used to be a person who did lots of assemblies and stuff like that. But I finished. And this was actually my first full week of being um, leading this church and being employed to be in charge of the church. Last Sunday was a great Sunday with Mark. But you know what? Taking on this job of being in charge of the church and leading the church and, and having time to do that is one of the most amazing, joyful moments of my life. I have to tell you that. I have loved this week and I'm really looking forward to what God's got for us as a church. And there are loads of things that I can be doing, part of my job, like a job description, all right? So when you get a job, kids, you get a job description that tells you this is what you've got to do. Dan just telling me about a new job in his work that he's got. So right, Dan, isn't it? And he knows there's certain things he's going to be doing which are different to what he used to do in his job. So it might be to help lead you into the presence of God. That could be a job that I have. Caring for people in the church. Doing some preaching, that's the talking in front, teaching people about God. Prayer, massive part of what I will be doing. Do you know what? It even includes narrating the Christmas story at the turning on of the lights. Okay? I've already been asked to do that. So, I want to say to you, put it in your diary, 19th of November, Saturday 19th, be there, 5.30 or 7 o'clock, I think it is, and I will be, I will be, it's two notes twice, it's twice, not that I don't know the time, it's 5.30 and I think 7 or 7.15, I will be narrating the Christmas story, um, while we, and we need some people to come and get dressed up, Simon. So there you go, there's a moment for you, to get dressed up. There you go. Um, so that's the kind of thing, but you know what? The main thing God's laid on my heart, right from the very beginning when we started Trinity, the thing he's laid on my heart is to focus on making disciples. It's what Jesus told his followers to do. He said, before he left them, he said, go and make disciples. Now, something, Abel, that I haven't missed out, yeah, <laughs> something, that, um, something that I haven't missed in my old job was the meeting I'd have round about this time, end of September, early October, with a couple of my governors and a representative from West Sussex, and we'd sit in my office and they would go, Right, Martin, tell us of how you got on with the targets we set last year. And if I'm lucky, I looked at them yesterday to remind myself what they were. And I have a bit of evidence to prove that I've done what I've been doing. You see, in a job, you get set targets. You get set targets. But you've got to achieve a certain thing. But sometimes you get set targets at school with children as well. Do you ever get targets at school? Yeah? Anyone got a target at school? I can remember setting targets like, I've got to make sure I put finger spaces in my writing. Come on, you've got a target. 
Get better at maths. Yeah. They're particular thin in maths. You've got to get better at that. Yeah. Is there? So you might have things like, don't forget to use adjectives in your writing. Do you get that kind of thing? And all the adults are going, well, what's an adjective? You can't remember that. <laughs> or, or if you're in year six, it might be a subordinate clause or something like that. And you're all going, no, I didn't have you. Yeah. Right. Kez will teach you later, all right? She'll give you a lesson on all those things. But we get set targets all the time, don't we? Right? Who's got a target at work? Your boss is giving you a target. Yeah? Yeah? We have to get targets. Well, do you know what? Jesus was asked by someone about what's the most important target you can have. What's the most important target? So a man asked him, what's the biggest thing? What's the most important thing I should do if I want to follow God as I want to follow God in all I can do? Really, what he said was, what's the greatest commandment? What's the greatest thing? And, and, and what should my target be? And uh, Jesus answered. But Jesus, Jesus said this. So when he was asked, what's the target? What should I be doing with my life? This is what Jesus said. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Take your hands. Put your hands on your heart. Go on, do it. Go on, do it. Yeah, love the Lord with all your heart. Right? With all your soul. Now your soul is kind of your whole inner being, the person who you are. That's all of you. Alright? Love to go with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Church of us God bless you. Yeah, well done. Alright, with all your strength and with all your mind. Alright? Most of us have got a brain in there, so I'm happy with our mind. So love God with all your heart, with all your soul, that's all you need, all your strength. And all your mind. And then he said, and love your neighbour as yourself. Love your neighbour as yourself. It's well. You shake hands, George. George, you shake hands. Okay. Alright? Now, if the target is the trustees of the church. So we have some trustees, a group of people that help make sure we're doing what we're meant to do as a church. Like Phil's a trustee, Carolyn, Simon, trustees. If they were to send me a target, do you know, I think this would be a good target to set me. To love God in every part of my being and to love others like I love myself. In fact, I think it's a target we can all do. We can all aim for this target. Right? And when we get a target, I don't know if you're likely at work, when they first sent me a target in my job, at first I'm like, how on earth am I going to achieve that? It seems unattainable, out of my reach. Do you know, there are, there are times when I even find it, and if you're like me, you find it hard to love yourself sometimes. Do you ever have moments like that? Where you just think, oh, I've messed up so much, I can't even love myself. How am I meant to love others? How am I meant to love God? I love God with all my emotions and my intellect and my body and my, my very being. Surely I'm going to fail. Surely I'm going to fail and I can't do it. Well, I've got good news for you today. God doesn't just set a target and then leave us to struggle with it. He doesn't just go, oh, wait to do this. Right, off you go, get on with it, I'm off over here. He doesn't do that. He is like, do you know what God's like? He's like the perfect teacher you can have in school. Or, or adults, he's like the perfect boss. You can imagine if you had the perfect boss. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be good? Alright? Someone who sets you a target and is challenging, but they don't just leave you on your own. They help you achieve that target. That's what a good teacher does, isn't it? That's what a good boss does. Do you know, there's a teacher in my school. Her name is Mrs. Nickel. Right? She's still there. And she's one of the best teachers I've ever known. She's amazing. And she sets very challenging targets for you. And they're all personal and they're all individual. And she remembers them all. She knows them all in her head. And during that every day, she's dropping into conversations. She's like, Clinton, Clinton, don't forget your adjectives. Yeah? And she'll go, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and, and don't forget, keep all four bits of your chair while the, the legs are on the floor. Right? <laughs> Rocking on your chair. She just knows all their targets and she's doing all the time. But then what she does, she then plans the lessons to 
help the children reach their targets. And then she uses loads of encouragement. Great adjective, Clinton. We all go out, you've done 10 minutes without rocking on your chair. She does it all the time. She's encouraging them all the time. And then she goes, right, let's celebrate that little bit of a step. You've gone towards your target. And by doing that, the children make progress. And you know what? They get to the end of the year. They go, I've got my target. I've got it. <coughs> because she's such a good teacher. And you know what? Our Heavenly Father is even better than that. Even better than that. It's working now. Oh, fantastic. I've lost my clicker now. Well done, Phil. That's that. Okay, just comes out a bit there. So, it all starts with faith. If we're going to reach this target of loving God with all our, what was it? With all our, shut out, shut out, heart, soul, strength. If we're going to do that, right, if we're going to do that, and we're going to love our neighbours ourselves, all right, it starts with faith. Because you have to have faith in your teacher, don't you? You have to trust your teacher. It takes a few weeks, doesn't it, you have a new teacher. It's kind of go, oh, what am I going to do with this teacher? Am I going to trust them? Are they really going to have my best, or are they going to be a real dragon? And I just have to keep my head down and keep up. We need to learn to trust. Well, that's putting faith. Do you know, you are putting faith in your chair. Saxon, you are putting faith in that chair right now. It's going to hold you up. <coughs> You're trusting it. Yeah. So what happens? We put faith in things. And we need to put faith in God that he's going to be this good teacher that's going to help us. Right? When you first accept Jesus as your saviour and Lord, when you become a Christian, you make a decision to say, I'm going to put my faith in God. And do you know what? You need your own faith. I, I can't live off the faith of my mum and dad. I can't do that. That's not possible. I have to have my own relationship with God, put my faith in Him. But when we accept Jesus into our heart, put our faith and trust God, right? Like we celebrated with the Lord's Supper when we had bread and juice, it's reminding ourselves actually we're putting faith in God, in His Son Jesus to do what he says he will do, and to help us on our journey to reach this target. And at that moment when we put faith in Jesus, do you know what? Transformation begins. This is what Paul wrote um, to a church in, in Greece. He wrote this. He said, whoever is a believer in Christ is a new creation. Say that, new creation. Say it. New, new creation. He's a new creation. The old way of living is gone. It's disappeared. A new way of living has come into existence. When I became a Christian, I remember the moment when Jesus entered my heart. And immediately, I felt different. Over the next few days, I had a sense no, of a greater love for God and, and, and things I, I, I knew weren't right to be doing. Do you know, they weren't as interesting to me. They weren't as exciting. Did I start to love others more? I think that was a bit of a slower start. It took me a little bit longer to get going on that. But as I look back over my life, of the years that I've been following Jesus, I can see that he's been changing me, transforming me. I'm nearer to my target of loving God and loving others than I ever was before. Now, it's amazing. God takes us on a journey of transformation. <coughs> you've got rid of the person you used to be and the life you used to live and you've become a new person. This new person is continually being renewed in knowledge to be like its creator. Continually being renewed. You see, God's not like the teacher that goes, right, your target is to aim for that, and then they leave you on your own to get on with it. God is saying, you're aiming for this. It's a tough, tough target. But I'm coming alongside you, and I'm going to renew you. 
I'm going to help you. I'm going to make you new. I'm going to transform you by your Holy Spirit so that you can reach that target. When he says a new person, it's not just like a, a, a bit of an improved version. You know when, when mum goes into the bathroom and puts her makeup on and comes out? It's not that kind of just renewed. Or dad has a haircut and he looks a bit better because he's tidier. It's not that. It's a completely new creature. Completely different. God makes this amazing thing. And, and he makes us, do you see that? He makes us like our creator. Who's our creator? God, yeah. It makes us more and more like Jesus as he works in us. It's amazing what he does. But, do you know what? Faith isn't enough. Faith isn't enough. Just putting our faith in, oh, hold on. I thought faith is what you need for being saved. It is, you're right. To be saved, you need to put your faith in Jesus. But, but it's not enough. How do I know that? Well, Jesus told a story. I need some help to say here again. He told a story. If you can't see the tough spot, you can come round if you want to. And this is the story Jesus told. There was a man. And this man was wise. Who wants to be a wise man? Come on, we'll come in my wise man. <coughs> okay. So this wise man, I hope this is going to work. You know how you do these things. I couldn't practice it. I'm just going to hope it works. So we'll see. Here we go. Okay. This wise man, build a house. Show everybody your house. Go on, hold it up. Go on, show everybody. Look at that. Wow. What a house. Okay, there's his house. Okay. And he built it on the rock. Keep it on the rock. Go on, put it on there. That's it. All right, I'm hoping that's going to be okay. Good, right, stand over there for me, okay? All right, so he built his house on the rock. Right, I need... So actually, you can do this. Can you come and be the storm? Okay? So the rains come. The waves come. The storm hits. The winds blow. Go on, pour water on top of it. Just pour it on top. Don't try and get a splash of it. There we go. And what happened to the house? What's happened? It's got wet, but is it moved? Thank you, it's enough for now. Thanks. Is it moved? No, it stood firm. That was a wise man. I know if you want to be a wise man. Yeah, 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 okay. A wise man builds a house on rock. And when the rains and the wind, yeah, when the wind comes, it stays still. Okay, guys, down back a bit. I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll see. Here we go. <coughs> Who wants to be the foolish man? <laughs> well done. <laughs> God, Sarah, yeah, you can be the foolish man. Okay, right. So the foolish man. Oh. Show everybody your house. Hold it up. Go on, hold it up high so you can see it. There's a the house, all right. The foolish man builds a house. On the sand. Go on, put it on the sand. Just put it there. That's it. Okay. And we'll see what happens. And sucks in the storm. Comes. Here we go. Let's see what happens. And oh! I'm so glad that happened. <laughs> <laughs> the house fell. It fell. Thanks, guys. Give me a round of applause. Oh, no, no. Thanks for helping me. It fell. Wise man builds on rock. Foolish men, and I think probably foolish women too, build on sand. There's a song. Alright, there's a song. I think it's there at the end of it. It's a very old little chorus. Some of you will remember it. Okay, there's this. Right, you're building your house. 
Hounds on Rock. Okay, so he's right again. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. Have a go at this one. 
to Christmas penny has a go at that one. And that's exactly the same for us as we follow Jesus. You know, Abraham. Abraham was an old man who lived many, many, many thousand years ago. He's the kind of start of it all. And God spoke to him and said, God, God said, do you know, Abraham, you're going to have loads of, loads of, loads of, loads of descendants. You have this massive family. In fact, try and count the stars in the sky. You're going to have more than that. <laughs> try and count the sand grains in the shore. You're going to have more than that. But I want you to leave where you are and I want you to go to a new land. So Abraham had faith in God. Whoa, this is fantastic. You're going to be a blessing to nations. We're going to see this amazing thing. If Abraham had stayed where he was and not packed up his tent and taken his family on the journey to go where God said, that's not faith, is it? Faith and obedience are so important. God has set me a target. He set you a target too. <coughs> to love him with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, with all my mind. And, you know, the way that gets worked out is by loving others, actually. That's how it's seen. By loving others as I love myself. And the target is really hard. It's really hard. But God says, I'm going to help you. I'm going to provide resources. I'm going to provide power. I'm going to come and live in you by your His Holy Spirit in me, in you. And he says, do you know what? I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to make you a new person. I'm going to give you my word. I'm going to give you the Bible. Look, read it. It helps you. It helps you. And do you know what? I'll also, do you know what? I'll even be available. Not like teachers who go out at three, or they just sit live in the cupboard. I'm not sure what they do. But anyway. Whatever teachers do, they go and think. So God says, I'll be available for you every single minute of every day, right through every year. You can talk to me any time you like. You can ask my help. You can ask my advice. It's amazing, isn't it? Far better than any teacher. But he then says, but I need you to follow what I say. I need you to be obedient. I call you into obedience with me. Remember place Simon says, you afraid that? Yeah. Yeah? Simon says stand up. Simon says, you do this, stand up on leg. Yeah. Sit down! Oh, no. Simon did say, oh, yeah. See, obedience is all about following what you're asked to do, isn't it? Simon says, put your finger up your nose. <laughs> well, some of you did it. Well, I don't see what Um. But it's about recognising I put my trust in God, but then I follow what he says. You know, even the best teachers uh, in the best schools can't promise that every child in their class is going to reach their target, can they? They can't do it. They can't do it. So many other variables. But you know what? With Jesus, the ending is very different. Did you know that? The discipleship journey that I want to help us all go on is, is, is all about becoming more and more like Jesus. That's what it is. Because actually, if you want to see someone who loved God with all their heart, their soul, their strength and their mind, and loved others like he loved himself, if you want to see the perfect example of that, we just need to read about Jesus in here. Because he did what he did it. He's the one who shows us it's possible. And God says, and I'm going to help you become more and more like Jesus. In Philippians it says this, I'm convinced that God who began this good work in you will carry it on through to completion on the day of Christ Jesus. He's going to do it. So there's going to be a day when Clinton loves God with absolutely all his heart and all his soul and all his strength and all his mind and he loves everybody else that he loves himself. There's going to be a day. John, wrote it in one of his letters. Oh, where's that? Is that it? Yes, it, yeah. Dear friends, he said, now we are God's children. What we will all be isn't completely the key yet. We do know, though, this is what we do know, we do know that when Christ appears, we will be like him. Because we'll see him as he is. What does that mean, we'll be like him? Does it mean we're all going to be 30-year-old Middle Eastern men with beards? 
It doesn't mean that. It means we'll be like him in character. We're going to have the same character as Jesus. And what was Jesus? Loving. He loved his father and he loved others. So do you know what? Here's some good news. The end is secure. Hallelujah. When you are with Jesus in eternity, when you're with the Queen in eternity, because she's going to be there, when you're with all the wonderful people we read about in the Bible, are there, and we're talking to them, do you know what? We're going to be the most amazing, loving people. Because Christ has promised he's going to do it for us. But then again, he's even better. Because he says, you don't have to wait till then. You can start now. You can start now. My plea is that you don't get stuck just at the faith bit. Yet I put my faith in Jesus. But actually we realise the importance of obedience. Somehow, miraculously, Jesus will make us like him. I don't know how he does it, but he's going to do it. But let's not wait till the end of our life for that moment. Let's join him, because that's what discipleship is. Discipleship is on a journey to becoming more and more like Jesus. So do you see why I want that as my focus? Because that's what I want for my life. That's what I want for your life too. That we become more and more like Jesus. So I want to say to you, we're just gonna we're gonna sing one song to finish. I want to say to you, alright, you can stop singing for me if you want, and just for a moment, give yourself a target to do with loving more. What could you do in the next few days that would be exercise of your loving more? It might be loving somebody. It might be saying, God, I want to give you some time and some space to speak to me. So I'm going to love you by just stopping for two minutes in the morning to speak to you. It might be, do you know what? It's, I'm going to tie you in my bedroom up the first time my mum asks to speak. Just love it. It really is. Adults, I leave you to, to be with God. Yeah? How are you going to move forward on your discipleship journey to love God and love others?